Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this lesson, we are going to learn how to do calculations involving the combined gas law. In a previous lesson, we had talked about how to combine the gas laws into a single equation. I have here on screen all four of them, um, including Avogadro's, and I wanted to start viewing the patterns. We have uh, pressure and volume um, on the top of the equation, and temperature and number of moles in the bottom, right? So if we were to put them all together, we would end up with something similar to this. Now here, Avogadro, uh, so Avogadro's law in, in the sense of we don't have moles in the equation um, is important to note because for the combined gas law to hold true, we need to ensure that the number of moles stays constant, meaning the number of particles of gas is going to remain the same. Now, as we move forward, I want you guys to keep in mind that we must continue to um, ensure that all of our pressure values are in the same unit, that temperature is still calculated in Kelvin, and that volume is still calculated in liters. So those are conversions that we cannot forget, even though we're no longer talking about the specific gas laws, now we're talking about the combined gas law, and all of those different conversions and rules still apply. Let's look at one example. And because we have viewed the different gas laws and we completed many examples with them, for the combined gas law, we're only going to look at one. Now for simplification purposes, I've also ensured that all of our units are already in the correct um, way that we want them for the calculation. So everything's already in liters, in Kelvin, and in atmospheres. But please know that in a question, if you are not given Kelvin, you must continue to do your um, calculation of adding 273. If, of course, your unit is not in liters for volume, then we need to make sure that we do that as well, that calculation. Now, let's read the question. If I have 5.4 liters of a gas at a pressure of 5 atmospheres and a temperature of 475 Kelvin, what would be the temperature of the gas if I decrease the volume of the gas to 2.4 liters and decrease the temperature to 3 atmospheres? Now, because of our previous information, uh, I'm going to go ahead and write down up here the um, equation. So we have PV1 equals PV2, both of them divided by 1 and then divided by temperature 2. Okay, so since we have our equation up here, what I still recommend for you guys to do is always to ensure that you are identifying your important units. So what I have done here is that I've um, highlighted them in blue. And also, I want to make sure that we understand that the question is asking us for the temperature, and that would be the final temperature. So we are starting with the volume, one. We are given the information for the pressure and also the temperature. We are looking for temperature number two, and we were also given the information for the volume the final one, and the pressure, the final one. So using our combined gas law, we're going to put in all of the information into the equation. So we would start with our pressure, um, our initial pressure, which is five atmospheres, and our initial volume, which is 5.4 liters. Divide that by temperature. And again, I repeat this because it happens many, many times and too often that students forget to ensure that the units are the correct ones. So um, always, always be on the lookout for that. Then we have our pressure final, which would be three atmospheres. Our final volume, which is 2.4 liters. Divide that by the temperature number two, which is exactly what we're looking for. Now, just like an algebra class, we are missing uh, a variable, right? So we're going to solve for T final, so the second temperature. And what I'm going to do on the left side of the equation, I'm just going to go ahead and multiply that out. And um, what I'm trying to do is simplify that value because I don't want to deal with a multiplication in a fraction. So I'm just going to put that into the equation, into the calculator, simplify it. And I get 0 0.0568. And that would equal to, and I'm also going to simplify the top of the, the fraction. So the 3 times 2.4. Because I want to be dealing with um, as little a uh, quantity of numbers as I can. So this is what we have. 0 0.0568 equals to 7.2 uh, divided by T2. 
So here we're going to use some of our algebra knowledge. I'm going to go ahead um, and just write it here on the side, so just so that you guys know. And I'm going to multiply both sides by t2. So if I multiply both sides by t2, I'm going to end up with 0 0.0568 equals um, t2 equals to 7.2. Now, if I do that, I can then divide on from both sides to 0 0.0568. So I'm going to do it from both sides. Now, once I simplify that, I end up with T2 equals 7.2 divided by 0 0.0568. And hopefully by now we've gotten really good at manipulating our numbers, um, just like we do in algebra class, which is one of the main reasons why Algebra is uh, usually a prerequisite for chemistry. And whenever I divide 7.2 uh, by 0 0.0568, I end up with the temperature, final temperature, of 126.76, and that would be in Kelvin. So that would be our final answer for this question. In our uh, next lesson, we are going to learn about the ideal gas. Um, again, like I mentioned, in this uh, equation, just to keep it simple, I ensure that everything was already uh, the same unit for temperature, uh, for pressure, the kelvins for temperature, and liters for volume. And again, if you encounter any kind of question uh, for practice that does not have those values already, make sure that you convert, um, and there will be a review session for that in our next lesson for ideal gas in case you have forgotten how to complete those conversions. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Thank you.